All right, so I'm going to show you everything you need to do to get Dishonored up for speedruns. Uh, the first thing you need to do is actually install the game and run it at least once. This does the first time setup and it makes sure that all the config files are uh, created and all in the right place. Just need to open up the game make sure it's run. Uh, next up, you need to figure out what patch you're going to run on. Uh, current patch 1.4 is uh, the only patch you can run the DLCs on. And it's slightly slower than 1.2 for any percent. So you're you're likely going to want to down patch if you're running any percent or all collectibles there in LG. Um, the down patch also includes the Voidwalker DLC if you're doing yes, which you should be. So if you open up the leaderboards, go to resources. Here's the down patch. Uh, you just want to download it as a zip from this uh, Dropbox. That will give you this uh, zip here. So you go into your install directory in Steam. Now if you ever want to actually run the DLCs, you should probably make a backup of your Dishonored copy. So in here I've done this here. and name this like 1.4. Uh, whichever one you have named Dishonored is the one that Steam will launch. So you can just switch between them. So inside of Dishonored, take these two directories, you don't need that thing, and just extract it over on top of this, replace everything. And now you're down patched. That's all you have to do. Close this, and you don't need this either. And next up, what you're going to do is a bunch of config edits on I and I edits to make the game a little bit better. So in Documents My Games Dishonored, Dishonored Game Config, uh, the two things that you care about are Dishonored Engine and Dishonored Input. We'll start with Engine. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So in uh, Dishonored Engine, first what you're going to search for is uh, the smooth frame rate. So this puts a uh, frame rate cap on the game. By default, it's 130. That's too low. We want something like 250. This is a good cap. This lets you get all of the tricks. Uh, any higher than this, and the walls start to get really sticky, and they're, uh, it's not very pleasant. So leave this at true to enable the frame rate cap, and just make the max 250. You don't care about min at all. Uh, Next up are some things that'll increase frame rate if you're having trouble hitting uh, the minimum frame rate required to do th some of the tricks. So search for dy dynamic lights. So you can turn off dynamic lights. Also, the caps don't matter. You can write whatever false you want. Turn off dynamic lights and dynamic shadows. And BLO light shafts you can also turn off. So those three things change. Um, and then there's a couple just little nice things that you can change that make your life a little bit nicer. First one, uh, the four snow startup movies. Change this to true, it'll disable the like intro logos at the start of the game. It just makes the startup a lot faster, which is nice. Do not touch this one. This turns off load screens and bad things happen. When you... And the only other thing that you can, other useful thing is uh, pause on loss of focus. If you set this to false, then the game won't pause when you alt tap. It's just a nice little thing to have. So that's everything you should really care about in Dishonored Engine. For input, we're going to change a couple of the binds. So scroll down to M underscore PC bindings. And what we care about is the F input. So we're going to duplicate this entire thing. And we're going to bar. So I have mouse scroll up bound to jump and mouse scroll down bound to this entire F input. You're not allowed to break up the command. 
but you're able to rebind an entire command to a different thing. So now when you scroll up, you'll jump. And when you scroll down, you'll do the same thing as an F input does. Now, the game actually likes to revert these things, so right-click Properties. If you mark them as read-only, then the game will not override them, and your changes will actually stay. All right, so that's all the external things that you're going to do. Launch up the game. So, if you own the DLC, you can tell if you're on 1.2 because they're not here. But if you don't own the DLC, obviously they won't be there anyway. But we're going to go through the options now. Auto use mana elixir is personal preference. Uh, a lot of people have it on. This just means when you're out of mana and you try to blink, it'll use a potion instead of blinking. It's, as I said, personal preference. Uh, turn off kill cams, easy mode. This doesn't matter. Turn down head bob because it looks weird. Doesn't matter. On UI, you want to turn off tutorial notifications. Everything else doesn't really matter. Uh, for crosshair style, you probably want it to be normal because this will show you when you're out of mana, like right in the middle of your screen, which is pretty nice. Uh, for controls, there's a number of things that you want to make sure are found somewhere comfortable. So movement, jump, uh, this is different from what you changed in the input.ini. Uh, sneak you want somewhere convenient, like either C or crouch. One of the two, probably. Uh, sprint leaning, you should be on F or something. Uh, block and choke you want somewhere convenient. I think by default it's control, I didn't really like that. Rebind that somewhere. Um, don't really need any of these things. Health and mana elixir you should have somewhere convenient. Hours menu, make sure you bind somewhere. Have it on tab. Quick save, quick load, you want somewhere much closer than the default. And uh, shortcut 7 is blink, so you want that somewhere convenient and easy to reach. Mouse settings, you probably just want to turn off mouse smoothing, that's about it. Gamepad, you're not going to be playing with the gamepad anyway. Video settings, make sure VSync is off. Uh, and then full screen your window to his personal preference. Same with resolution. Field of view is also personal preference. Uh, I have it at 95. I find the default incredibly shitty. For all of these things, you probably want on lowest. The only exception would be maybe texture details, because it gives you some setup for elevators. So I have that on medium. You can also do low if you want. And then audio is whatever you want. You probably want to turn on subtitles. It's because they're to have. I guess. Oh yeah, that's it. Uh, the only other thing that you need to really worry about is making the first save. Basically, when you go to new game on easy, it'll play out the whole like two minute cutscene. And then you'll eventually You'll gain control right here. The game will make an autosave. You want to go up here, load the autosave, it'll be the first thing. And then as soon as it loads in, and this is the autosave, as soon as it loads in, pause and make a hard save. And that'll be the save that you're actually starting to run from. And then whenever you load this up, you can immediately quick save and then just start to run from a quick save. So yeah, that is everything that you need to run this game, all the changes and everything. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And that's it.